So this is a short film demonstrating how to load a large format cut film holder, a double dark slide. Uh, and I'm going to be loading some 5 by 4 inch film because I'm going to be using it with my zero image 45 pinhole camera while I'm on holiday down here in Cornwall. So what we need is obviously the dark slide itself. We need some large format film, some 5 by 4 inch film. And we need a dark bag, a uh, light tight um, changing bag to enable us to load the film in total darkness. Uh, if you're not familiar with these, uh, this is a, a simple um, light proof bag with a zip opening at one end. You put all your bits and pieces inside the bag and then zip it up and put your hands through these hand holes here and then you can carry out the operation, loading the film, whatever it is, in total darkness. Not ideal, uh, a dark room would be better, but not everybody has access to a dark room and I certainly haven't got access to one while I'm on location, so that's the only option. You might also consider using some lint-free cotton gloves um, to help cut down on the risk of fingerprints. I'm not going to use these for the demonstration purpose because it's a bit fiddly and you can't see what I'm doing quite so well. So I've got some film uh, and the film I've got is Fomapan 200 and I've also got some Kodak T-Max 400. Now the Foma pan is actually very reasonably priced, probably the cheapest 5.4 film on the market. Um, and it's perfectly good quality. Um, and I would suggest that uh, if you're new to large format photography, then this is possibly something you should consider because it will make it affordable. T-Max is undoubtedly a better film, uh, this T-Max 400, but it's probably something in the region of four times as expensive to work with. So I would suggest that if you're new to large format photography, maybe Foma Pan is the way to go to start with. So I've got a piece of uh, um, film here, a piece of Foma Pan. And what I've got to do is I've got to get this into the dark slide and I've got to get it into the dark slide in such a way that the right side is facing towards the lens or in my case, the pinhole. So what I've got to do is I've got to make sure it's a motion side facing out. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to open up my dark slide and I'm going to give it a quick clean with a, a rocket blower. You might decide that you want to use a can of compressed air if that's available to you, but I promise you, you won't get all the dust out of the dark slide. You won't end up with a negative, which is completely dust free. That's almost impossible. Anybody that's been working in a dark room for any length of time will know that at some stage or other, dust is going to be involved. And it's quite likely at the end of the day, you're going to have to retouch your print or retouch your scan to some extent. Uh, it's just uh, goes with the territory. But we can try and get out as much as possible. Then what we've got to do is load our film into the dark slide itself. Now, the tricky part, as I say, is trying to work out which is the emulsion side and which is the shiny side when you're working in total darkness, because we can't see that difference. Okay, so this is the emulsion side, this is the backing side. So what we do is we look at this little notch uh, uh, on the top edge of the piece of film. And all cut film, all 5.4, 5, 5.7, 5, 10, 8, whatever it is, all large format film will have a notch cut into it. And it serves two purposes. The first one is the shape of the notch is unique to the particular film stock. So if I run my finger along here and I can feel that notch and I feel the shape of that notch, it will tell me in the dark, I will know which type of film I'm using. So the notch code is usually printed on the back of the box to show you what shape that code is. The other thing this notch code is doing is indicating which side of the film is the emulsion side and which side is the backing side. And the convention is to load the film so that the notch is in the top right hand corner when it goes into the dark slide. Okay, you could do bottom left, but I was always taught top right, makes no difference. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm going to get my dark slide, get my piece of film, I'm gonna feel where that notch code is, and when I'm happy that it's in the right place, I'm going to slot it into the dark slide underneath the little ridges that are designed to hold it, slide it into the dark slide, and there we go. And then I can place my slide into the cut film holder. 
Now you'll notice with the slides that one side of the slide is white at the top edge here and one side is black. Some uh, manufacturers this will be a silver rather than a white but it should also be black on the other side. I can also feel a ridge along this edge here on this side of the slide. No ridge on this side. So that enables me to tell in the dark which side of this is white and which side is black. Which side represents unexposed film, which side represents exposed film. And that's the convention. So I'm going to put my slide into my dark slide, white side facing out. And that tells me that this is loaded with film and it is unexposed. A little lock on here as well I can use. Turn that so that I can't take that slide out until I'm ready. Okay. Then what I would do is I would put that in the back of my camera, pull out the dark slide, make my exposure, turn the slide around and slide it back in, this time with the black side facing out and that will tell me that I've exposed this side of the film, of the dark slide, but this sheet of film is still unexposed.